My name is Vahid Chita as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody and, and let us know where you're tuning in because a lot of the folks may not know who you are. Right. My name is Udo Erasmus and I live in Vancouver, Canada. And I'm in my bedroom because my daughter's coming and she has to be quarantined. So I'm doing this from my bedroom. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Let's dive into it. And I know... My, I know you have done. You have just finished up a book. Tell us a little bit about the book, and then I got some good questions for you. Okay, okay. So the book that I wrote is called "The Book on Total Sexy Health: The Eight Key Parts Designed by Nature," and it's a book that I started writing, basically, or started studying for, learning for when I was six years old. Now I didn't know the title, but I wanted to know how because I came out of the Second World War and everything was confusing. So I was always trying to figure out how things work. So I did science and then I did biological sciences, you know, because uh, how creatures work and psychology, how thinking works. And it was all about, man, there must be a way that human beings can live in harmony. This is what I thought when I was six years old and watched people arguing. And I said, I'm going to find out how. So that's been basically my driver. And the book is about uh, life, health, nature, and human nature. You know, of all the things that we need to do, whatever, whatever the, our secondary thing is, I think entrepreneurial is secondary. Primary is self-knowledge. Because your entrepreneurial um, endeavors will always be an expression of your state of being. And if your state of being is screwed up, your entrepreneurialism is going to be screwed up because it's an expression of yourself. So the more fully present you are in all of your being, the better of an entrepreneur you're going to be for whatever you decide you're going to do with your life. Which, which we talked about that, you know, it's an inside job, not an outside it's, job. It's absolutely inside job. So sometimes I say to people, so, you know, you need to take some time every day, just like you go to the bathroom, just like you eat breakfast, just like you turn your car keys and, you know, go and drive to your job or whatever it is you do. You need to take some time every day for yourself where you just sit still in a quiet place, in a quiet, safe place, close your eyes and tr bring your awareness inside into the space you occupy, your, your body occupies. And just be there and discover what there is in that space because that's where we, you will find yourself and there's way more you are way more amazing than you are from you from the outside you're way more amazing from the inside yeah i mean we talked about that and i said you know we talked about poetry and i talked and i told you rumi is very relevant today totally but your response was my response was yeah, Rumi's always been relevant because the thing we have done least well all of our time of history, which is like about 120 years, the thing we've done least well is to tune into ourselves. And people sometimes say to me, oh, yeah, but we got so many distractions that we didn't have before. Uh, that's bullshit because you only need one distraction. And a thousand years ago and 10,000 and 100,000 years ago, it was easy to have one distraction. Just a leaf flapping in the breeze is, it can be your distraction. Just a woman walking by the sidewalk when you're in a, in a, when you're in a monastery, you know, that'll be your distraction, right? So distract, well, you only need one distraction. We have more, more, we have more options, more choices on distractions today, but just one distraction will take you away from yourself. And then you will miss your own magnificence. And when you miss your own magnificence, it's like a wasted gift because nobody else can enjoy your magnificence except you, yourself. And that's true for every one of the 8 billion people on the planet. That is awesome. So here's my question. Yeah. You said entrepreneurship is second and we got to work on ourselves. Yeah. But a lot of people, when they go through personal and business challenges, that's very difficult to do. Yeah, who said, that, it, was, well, who said it was supposed to be easy? Well, I'm just saying it's so difficult that a lot of people don't pay attention to it. And they just focus on the business. Said, but you also said it's difficult. And if it's difficult, it, that doesn't mean it's impossible. True. Everything I agree requires, with that. requires effort. 
And if you think, and if you think convenience is what you're aiming for, you should not be an entrepreneur. Convenience, and if you, if you hear convenience and you're an entrepreneur, you should run like hell because convenience breaks you down. Challenge builds you, right? So if it's hard to do, then, then you know entrepreneurs are the kind of people who says, it's hard, okay, I'm doing it, <laughs> right? Well, you got to have a little bit of a craziness in you. Anyway, I mean, yeah. you, I think yeah. I, I think you're crazy. You thought about that book when you were six years old. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty and you crazy. Like you're, <laughs> that's yeah, pretty crazy. And, and then you look like you're 45 years old right now, so that was a long time, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I'm going to be 78 next week. So That is awesome. Oh, so, yeah. So, so, And I'm just getting started. During this whole entire craziness that's going on, I know you talk about you talk about money. You ha you did a special video, and and an IGTV that I think everybody should go yeah, watch. That was just purely based on money and how people view money yeah. and self confidence and all that. Yeah. So t tell us a little bit about that. Uh, about the money, my my view yeah. of money. Yeah, I mean, because you talked about it, you're like, hey, this is how, I mean, you mentioned a couple of crazy people that everybody on the planet knows, and you talked about money and how they came from wealthy families and how crazy they were and self-confidence. Yeah. So you talked about them in one of your videos. <laughs> well, I don't remember what I did on my videos. But... You, said, you, said, you said it had to do with Bentley. You had to do with with the car that you talked about Osama bin Laden, how he came from a big family, oh, a lot yeah, of yeah. money. You, you talked about that. Yeah, well, you, 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 know you what? said money, how money has. Yeah, so for me, money. You know, if you're if you're trying to be an entrepreneur just so you can make a lot of money, you you should quit. Entrepreneurs never do what they do for money. Money sometimes they make money, so I'm not against money. But if you think that finding, you know, if you if you want to be an entrepreneur just to make a lot of money, just go and rob a bank. That's where the money is, right? But you're not helping anybody. You're not doing anything that, that brings the human race forward. Entrepreneurs usually are people who have a who have a mission, and it's a heartfelt mission, and they're on fire for something. And and if a, if you're on fire for something that isn't about caring for life then you're probably a psychopath. <laughs> so in, in, in your journey of being an entrepreneur and working, what are a couple of steps that everybody needs to be watching out because you got a lot of old wisdom that, and, and you've seen a lot just, just because of your age. Yeah. You've seen a lot. What do you see that we could implement today that will be, I don't want to call it easy, but what are the, the, the mini steps that we yeah. can get so we're on the right trajectory? Right. Okay. I think, I think the first step is you got to do something to be with yourself. Whether that means going off in the mountains for two weeks by yourself, you know, and eating grass or whatever, or just sitting in your bedroom and closing your eyes and just getting in touch with you as a human being or with you as life. Because you're not even your body. Like if I say to you, hey, uh, 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 what's it, Ra Rahid? Rahid, hey, Rahid. Rahid. Yeah, I'm not, I, and I used to say I'm the I'm Rahid, my, but that's my name. That I know that that is not who I am. Yeah, but so yeah, so if, so I pointed you and say, whose body is that? What do you say? Typically, people will say it's mine. Yeah, it's my body. You know what you've just said? You are not the body. Because if it's your body, you're the owner. You're not the body. Right? Sure. Right. Okay. So you're the owner of the body. So who is, who is the owner of your body? And then people say, I am. So then who is I? Right? But the truth is life is the owner of your body. Life is the energy that keeps you alive. Life is the energy that runs everything. Right? It's omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient in your body. It's your God. Life is your God. You are the God of life in your body. It runs everything, right? And if you don't know that, you don't have perspective on life and living and doing. That's why, and I think if you, if you and frankly, that's the route I took. Nothing worked for me until I started doing self-knowledge because I didn't have perspective. I was always trying to, fill myself i was always trying to get stuff because i didn't feel content i didn't feel fulfilled 
But the thing is, fulfilled doesn't come from the money you make or the job you do or the, or the, the fancy thing you pull off. Feeling taken care of is an inside job. Life is the caretaker. And when I feel cared for by being in touch with life, because it's taking care of me even when I'm not in touch with it, when I feel taken care of, then it's not about me anymore. And then I can look around and say, okay, you know, what needs to be done around here? And what do I have talent for? And what would I like to be, what, where would I like to make a contribution? Because when I feel taken care of, the only thing left to do is to help. Until I feel taken care of, the only thing I'm ever doing is trying to get something for myself. So I'm a, I turn from, I, so I'm a getter until I get to know myself. And when I get to know myself, I become a giver. And when I become a giver, I can see more clearly because it's not about me getting taken care of anymore. That's already in place. And then anything goes. And then, yeah, then I can take on the oil industry, which I did. I, I developed a method for making oils with health in mind, took on the whole oil industry. There's like $60 billion a year. And, I'm, and sometimes I would think, geez, you know, who am I to take on this big industry? They must have, <clears throat> they must have tried what I'm, what I'm thinking of doing and figured out that it didn't work. No, they didn't, <laughs> you know? And so I developed flaxseed oil. But before that, I developed a method for making oils with health in mind, because there are most sensitive nutrients and they're damaged the most. They need the most care. We give them the least care. We throw them in the frying pan. And then when we throw them in the frying pan, they get, they f get fried and then they fry our health. You know, fried foods fry your health. Dumbest thing we ever invented to do with foods. But somebody came up with it and thought, wow, you know, this was like an entrepreneur who was really not in touch with himself. Because if, if this person felt taken care of whoever invented, invented the stupid frying pan, you know, they would have they would have done something that helps people, not that harms people. Right? And and you if you look at all the things that are good and all the things that are not working in the world. The things that are not working were created by people who are discontent. And discontent people are destructive. And, con and content people are constructive. That's why sitting still and discovering the beauty of your own existence has to be job one. <laughs> That's different from the way most people do entrepreneur, I know. But no, I was just I was just thinking that yeah. you know, fundamentally the the big challenge comes in. I hear what you're saying from a lot of older people, uh -huh. and I mean by age, because they have gone through life. Yeah, and I think there has been a shift at some point in their life where they have discovered that mm -hmm. that being a go getter is not the key. Being a go giver is a key, mm -hmm. but the younger people are, I don't want to say chase it because it's a necessity in our life to provide for our family. And predominantly, unless you live in a village and you live outside the city, you're going to need money to survive or to provide for your family in a normal way. Anything beyond that is not an abundance. Now you're over consuming, which makes you a user. So that I'm trying to find out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let, me I, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Here's the thing. When we were in my, our mother's womb, this is like the story of the, the human story. When we were in our mother's womb, there was nothing to do, nowhere to go. Everything was taken care of and it was safe, more or less. So we were at that point, where was our awareness? Well, our awareness is what didn't have any place to go. So it was inside, at rest, in its source, in life, inside of us okay that's where it was i call it the buddha tank because because basically we were we were floating around in a little ocean of bliss and so our awareness was inside present but outside absent because we didn't know anything about the world then we got born and our awareness had to get out go out to the world because we had now had to get to know the world that we need to survive in right so our awareness moved from present inside, absent outside, to present outside, absent inside. 
Now we don't feel whole anymore. Now we're discontent. And guess what? Life put into us a, a hunger or a thirst or a feeling. And whether you call that lonely or blue when somebody dumps you, or you call it striving, yearning, longing, or you call it emptiness, restlessness, and you feel it in your chest. You know what I'm talking about? Right. You know, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. That feeling in your chest? Right. That feeling begins very early. I, can, I remember I couldn't shake it when I was 17 years old. So I was pretty young. And I didn't know what it was and nobody talked about it. So I hung out with it for, for 13 years before somebody explained it to me and showed me a way to get back to myself. And so then I started. So I started at 30 before I was uh, successful in business, right? Now, everybody, every kid as a teenager, I have not ever met a teenager who doesn't feel that feeling. They just don't know what it is. But that feeling is their heart calling their attention to come back home inside to life. So it's calling all the time. And then we get distractions and another distraction and another distraction. And every time the distraction ends, then we feel heartbroken, uh, right? And then it's But the like, way that you're describing it, that means I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta kind of leave the family behind and then just go live in a village or in a mountain no, because no. anything else besides that, there's just way too much distractions. No, no, because what you do is you make that a part of your practice, just like you, you know, you don't, you don't leave the village to go use the toilet. I mean, you can if you want to, but you don't have to, right? You do all the same things, but you make a part of your day that you actually spend with yourself. And maybe you do it in your bedroom, or maybe you do it on the toilet, if that's the only place where you can be by yourself, or you, or you, you ask for time to be quiet, and maybe you introduce your children to that as well, because them learning how to be still is huge in terms of the quality of their life that they will have if they know how to do that. So you don't have to go anywhere. It, 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 you just make it part of your routine. And then when you get good at it, then you, you drag that into the world with you. You stay in it and you do your work and you do your entrepreneurial work in from that feeling of stillness. So now you're doing two things, still on the inside and your hands moving on the outside or your feet moving or your brain thinking. And you can be fully present in both of those at the same time. Now, does it take practice? Of course, but it doesn't take any more practice than it took you how to learn when you, to walk when you were a kid. Because what, what did you do? You tried to climb up, you fell down. You tried to climb up, you fell down. Then you got up and then you were wobbling and you fell down. <laughs> and how many times did you do that before you actually started being able to run, right? And we have not practiced bringing our awareness back home to ourselves almost at all. And so it's going to take a little bit of time. We've become very good at taking our awareness out through our senses into the world. So we're really good. Because at it's easy. Huh? It's very easy. Well, yeah. It's easy, easy to do. But at the beginning, it wasn't easy. And there is the, there is the part to it that, that because, because you need to get to know the world to survive, life has set, set it up that your senses, that your awareness will automatically go outward through your senses. But coming back has to be deliberate. And, and, what, and, what, and what calls you to do that deliberate effort of sitting still? is the ache in your heart and people don't like it. So they distract themselves from it. And what I say to people is no, sit and feel it because that's a huge gift. In fact, it's the greatest gift you've been given other than being alive is that your heart aches. It's the greatest gift you've been given other than being alive. Because if you didn't have that gift, you would never find your way back home and you would never discover the beauty that exists within your own it within the space your body occupies. I agree with that. And this is like, so when you say, oh no, that's what old people say. You know, I'm really clear about it because I'm older. No doubt about it. 
but I knew I knew that I had the pain of it unexplained when I was 17. And maybe, just maybe, all the young people, if there's any young people, maybe you're just fucking lucky that some old fart like me will actually talk about it and get you started earlier so that you'll be a better entrepreneur. <laughs> Yeah, I, I listen, amen to that, 100%. Yeah. Maybe we should do one live session with you every week oh, to I remind know. everybody. I'd be up for that it. If that's what it takes. I, I mean, because because I see so many people that this is something. How do I explain this? If they focus on this and not focus on money, if they fix this, money will be fixed. Absolutely. Absolutely. But and if I, you fix money, this will not be fixed. Yeah, and absolutely. And if, if your entrepreneurial thing is just about making a lot of money, you're going to be a really bad, lousy entrepreneur. And you'll probably end up being very destructive. And we have people in government like that. And we have people in business like that. And they're actually screwing up the world. Right? And they're cutting down all the freaking trees. Like we used to have 10 trillion trees. We got 2.5 trillion now. So 75% of the trees on the planet been hacked down. And and not and not rebuilt, you know, not sustainable, you know. And the young people know that it's what we're doing is not sustainable. It's not sustainable in environment. It's not sustainable in politics. It's not sustainable in relationships. It's not as sustainable in health. Well, if it's not sustainable in all of those, you got something that's not working, <laughs> right? Let's say you and I we're we're not done. We're gonna do a lot of live sessions because yeah. you just open up a kind of worm where oh, yeah. I, I, I must. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, but there, I, I'm yeah. thinking of at least 10 topics that we could do videos on. Right. And, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, and I opened up a can of beautiful worms. <laughs> Amen to that. Listen, Canada is in the house today. All Canada right. is in the house today for sure. But listen, definitely thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us. But you and I are going to be in communication. And hopefully whenever you're in LA, you let your daughter know and let us know. And then we'll coordinate. We'll get you into the studio. We'll do what we need to do. But meanwhile, that we're in quarantine, you and I are going to be in communications and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, as long as you show me how to use my stupid little technology. <laughs> I'll show you. I can teach you all of that. Stuff. That's yeah, the easy part. That. That's the easy part. Thanks for your you got patience. it. You got it. Say hello to the daughter. We'll talk soon. All right. Ciao. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.